Welcome to AppExchange Mavericks. My name is Nana Gregg. I'm a solution architect at IFM Restoration and a Salesforce MVP Hall of Fame. I'm here with Dan Brown of Financial Force, and I'm so excited to interview him and hear a little bit more about Financial Force. I've been working with Financial Force Solutions for about 10 years and am eager for the rest of the community to hear about it. Welcome, Dan. Tell us a little bit about yourself and about Financial Force. Hi, Nan. Great, great to see you again, and thanks for taking the time to speak with me. Um, my name is Dan Brown. I'm not the author. Um, I'm the guy who's been working in business solutions for about 30 years. I spent uh, about 15 years in the Dynamics uh, division at Microsoft. And most recently, for the last five years, I've been running the product organization of Financial Force. As you know, Financial Force is an ISV that it builds our solutions exclusively on the Salesforce platform. And we've been around for about 10 years, one of the first uh, organizations to build um, ISV code on the Salesforce platform. All right, Dan, you know I love Financial Force. Tell me a little bit about why Salesforce and Financial Force are a great match. I think the, the, the big thing is that they're both built with this customer engagement model in mind. Uh, and that's really in the DNA of any application that is built uh, on the Salesforce platform. The, the other thing that I think is really important is our solutions are quite complementary. So we sell a professional services cloud product and an ERP cloud product, and they really complement things like Salesforce automation and customer support and other workloads that the Salesforce platform uh, provides out of the box. So when we build our applications, we like to really complement what Salesforce does and give that end-to-end -end business process to the end customer. As a solution architect, I'm always looking for um, solutions that are end-to-end. -end. And I know Financial Force is 95% on the force.com platform in contrast to some other applications. So tell me how that impacts product development. You know, when you look at our applications, our applications, we first and foremost always look at the Salesforce platform technology as the building blocks um, for how we can build our apps. And we typically adopt a Salesforce te technology quite early when it's introduced. And what we find is we can really leverage the technology. We don't have to worry about a lot of baseline technology. So we can really focus on business process automation and the things that our end user wants. And that actually gives us a great advantage for when our customers want to extend or administer, um, they can use the same set of technology. So overall, we really put a premium on using Salesforce uh, platform. It just gives us great leverage in developing and throughout the full uh, customer lifecycle. And uh, the end user also doesn't even know that they're moving from Salesforce to Financial Force PSA to Financial Force ERP because it all looks the same, right? No, that's exactly right. It's a great point. The information architecture and the lightning design system, it's consistent when you go from, say, you know, opportunity management into to project management, et cetera. In fact, one of my favorite examples was demoing um, to an executive at a prospect, and she said, well, wait a minute, when am I getting into the financial force application? I'm like, you're, you're there. Uh, it just seamlessly flows. There's no integration or you know, abrupt shift in the experience. Let's talk a little bit about the decision-making process that companies go through when trying to decide to go on platform or on premise. Yeah, it's a, a constant you know, topic on CIOs' minds and even you know, business leaders in, in, in functions. I think you know, for the most part, people are buying SaaS solutions. The on-prem world, I think, is going away, um, and it's going away pretty quickly. So I think we're in a world where the question is, how many SaaS solutions are you going to buy that are disparate, and how many are you going to anchor? And this, what we've seen in the market is customers are really looking at these anchor tenants, these, these platforms that are going to be prominent. They're, they're, I, I would call them primary systems of records. And those primary systems of record are the ones that are really going to capture a large part of their business process. And they make the decisions based on total cost of ownership, extensibility of the platform, and obviously the ecosystem. How many solutions can they bring 
um, together and how well do they work together. And I think that's one of the massive value propositions of, of Salesforce and one of the reasons why we've built our solutions on the platform. Um, the Salesforce platform, in my opinion, is the preeminent application platform as a service. And it makes it very easy for ISVs like us to build applications of great value and connect them. And you mentioned user experience. It's also true on data model and business process. And I think those are all elements that people are looking at when they're making decisions on their platform. So for customers who choose Financial Force as their primary system of record, they can still integrate off-platform solutions as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And as you know, we talked about this primary system of record, oftentimes they need to speak to a secondary system of record or another primary system of record. Salesforce applications by nature have RESTful APIs for logic and object data. All right, Dan, it's time for the hard question. Tell me what makes Financial Force unique. I think the, the best way to think about our products and the value that they bring to our customers are three ways. Um, the first is, it, it kind of goes back to what we talked about at the beginning, which is customer engagement is built into the DNA of our applications. So whether you're looking at an account or a contact on an opportunity or on a project or on a contract or on a case or even on a billing document, it's all the same. And so that connectivity across the life cycle of customer engagement is absolutely critical. It also means connecting your data so that you can have a system of intelligence and you can think and make decisions based on data much, much easier. Now, the second thing, which follows from the first, is that we connect the front and the back office. And really, we think about things as, as one office as opposed to two. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is when you're engaging with your customer, the economics of that matter a great deal. How you present your bills, what is your cost to serve, what is your cost of, of, of revenue, and so on and so forth. And by having this connection between what we historically called the front office and the back office, you can do that well. We think about all business processes in an organization as customer centric. And then last but not least is, we really focus on service economy companies. Now, we all know that service economy companies almost by definition are customer centric, but when you move toward a service orientation, many business processes change. And all service economy companies focus on this opportunity to rev rec or opportunity to renewal, and those things can get complicated. But automating them means a better customer experience, and I think that goes without saying, um, but it also means a better business model. And so focusing on this service economy set of business processes, that's the third thing that really differentiates us. So can you give us a couple of examples of how customers are using Financial Force? So why don't we start with a couple of well-known technology companies um, that have pioneered software as a service Salesforce and Amazon. Now, interestingly, both of these companies, in order to improve how they brought their products to market, have built up over about the same time period, eight to 10 years roughly, large professional services organizations. And they run our PS Cloud product. Now, in order to scale this organization to give visibility into their projects and how they're furthering their solutions, and also to help their customer engagement, they've de deployed our products as a part of that opportunity to renewal, opportunity to recognition business process. And both have seen massive scale. I mean, Amazon's a really good example. They started out with a very small number of professional services consultants, and now are pushing almost 10,000 consultants as a part of their enterprise engagements, a critical enabler for them when they go B2B with their solutions. Now, let's switch gears and talk about a customer that is also using our ERP cloud and really combining the front office and the back office. One of my favorite examples, and you know this, this company well, is Sirius Computers. Now, one of the things that they do that is really clever is their salespeople are able to see a couple of things about their accounts that are financially oriented. Number one, they're able to see collections or DSO. 
Number two, they're able to see the margin on a quote that they're creating. And last but not least, they're able to see outstanding invoices and margin on those invoices. Really a great collection of information and they're compensated on that. So they're really incented to improve the overall business model of Sirius. And that gives you that end-to-end -end loop, that connection um, from the front office and the back office so you really can drive your business better. And I think it's amazing um, what Sirius Computers has done. There's a company that is a customer of ours called Quench. And they don't sell dispensers. They don't rent dispensers. They sell water as a service. And in order to do that, they need to manage the inventory. They need to know where it is. They need to manage um, the field engagement there. They need to charge from a from an annuity or subscription uh, basis. And they've really servitized this, this concept of water dispensing. And it's a really cool concept, a really cool company. And I think it's a good window into how many companies are becoming service economy companies and, of course, using the Salesforce platform and using solutions like Financial Force to really engage on um, their customers. All right, Dan, thank you so much for talking to me today on App Exchange Mavericks. I could talk about Financial Force and Salesforce all day long and have really learned a lot. So where can other people learn about Financial Force? You can go to financialforce.com or check us out on the App Exchange. You can search for our PSA and ERP solutions. And then I really appreciate the time. It was great catching up and seeing you again. And thank you as always for being a fan of Financial Force and Salesforce.